stage three of the Tour of Hungary and the first of two big general classification appointments beckon for the riders on what are set to be potentially very inclement weather conditions. Nine degrees, so south of uh, double figures in uh, Celsius. Uh, the wind is unlikely to blow. We could have a bit of rain. Fabio Jakobsen leads overall as a result of his glorious stage two sprint success. Just ahead by the narrowest of margin of his fellow countrymen sprinting rival Dylan Ronnevegen. It's all about uh, sprinters and riders from the breakaway in that general classification, which is set to be significantly upended at the conclusion of the third stage, heading out of Kampischvar and heading towards Cage. 180 kilometers of racing, 2,500 meters of climbing. Kampischvar, popular destination for cyclists and for general tourists alike. Southwestern Hungary on Lake uh, Dezeda, uh, One local lap to get things underway in an intermediate sprint, and then we'll head east towards the meat of this stage, backloaded with climbs. Six uh, classified climbs along the way. We've got three intermediate sprints as well on offer. Category three and category two climbs, but I can tell you they're particularly steep and intense. And uh, long local laps around the finishing city of Page. Rippy little concluding climb to the finish. The first of two summit finishes in succession for the riders. In the Tour of Hungary, this is set to be a very challenging day indeed. The city and countryside brimming with opportunity for bike riders. And we're heading towards the uh, TV mast, the destination point in page up beside the zoo. At the conclusion of 180 kilometers. Gorgeous countryside. There are plenty of nervous faces. The outside of the uh, activities. Capish Fire playing those two big time bike racing again once more. They've done the year in succession and the riders presented to a large and enthusiastic crowd. A bit of rain in prospect for this. The uh, caravan workers are going to potentially get a little bit cold along the way. Riders, too, as well, will be ever vigilant. Plenty of uh, winter weather gear. Maybe the old wet weather tire in all the evidence about the day's activities. One or two non finishes from, uh, from the uh, second stage as a result of various crashes. We hope that riders are going to be able to stay upright throughout the day's activities. squad and indeed from Emperor X uh, we'll be looking forward to an opportunity to race on challenging and grippy roads Kapishvar an amazing location to get things underway it's a city that hosted its first bike race in the late 1800s rich and long heritage in the sport part of the tour of Hungary on and off since 1927. Ready the good. On hand once more to complete the starting ceremonies. Holders, those riders at the front of the peloton and well wrapped up. White European champions, Gile, over that yellow race leader's jersey. The field there to get things underway. Matas Stuchek in the red uh, mountains jersey. Also recovers a bit of TT investments. Early stages, Caleb Ewan trying to work his way back into contention. A stage to be got through, really, for the uh, rider from Lotto Destiny after two sprint opportunities. He'll have another one on the final day. And when the flag came in, actually enough, things got busy. Very different character of a stage in prospects on stage three, following two days of sprinting. 
much of a contest for the uh, early break in the first two days of action. There's some heavy hitters starting to appear that they uh, head of affairs in the early stages of, uh, of this one as well. Some big name jerseys, Alpacine to Koinig. Much in evidence, a lot of destiny as well, trying to put a rider into the early move. So the rider's well muffled up against the elements. This early move establishes itself out front. And Trace Devant, the former uh, national champion of Belgium, third in line here, is in here and very impressively. Stoichek, underneath that uh, dark jelly, there is a red Mountains Leaders jersey and the HD Investments rider. So too indeed has uh, been alongside him here. Rodolfo, uh, Filippo Rodolfo in the break yesterday. Oh, trying to hoover up some mountains points. Uh, Fabio Jakobsen not so keen to go up the road. All smiles from the other jersey holder. Proud moment for him. He'll enjoy the day in the jersey, mindful uh, of the fact that he's, well, he's not really going to be able to defend it. He'll think about the uh, final sprint opportunity on day five. Meanwhile, other riders trying to counter-attack to get into the uh, first, into that uh, into that move up front, but a bit of a gap, and it's unlikely to pay dividends. As Stoichek takes the first uh, intermediate sprint of the day, three intermediate sprints along the way, uh, double opportunities uh, there. Of course, you've got bonus seconds towards the overall. And Stoichek, best placed of the riders from the early move in that breakaway group. Indeed, he's just third overall at a remove of uh, simply two seconds. Having said that, not really a threat, not thought of as a climber despite the fact he's wearing that Mountains jersey. Stoichek perhaps uh, thinking more about uh, the points jersey and the points to be gained in the intermediate sprints. Horenko not able to get up and into the break. The counter-attack proving unsuccessful and he's welcomed back into the main peloton. Pursuing the uh, riders out front. Fairly tight, uh, tight removed. They're not even letting this break get up the road. Despite the fact that we've over 2,500 metres of climbing today, sense that they need to uh, take too many risks. The presence, perhaps, of such uh, well-known names as Dries de Bont of the opposite Corning squad. Cameron Scott is there for the Bahrain victorious team. Felipe Rodolfo, as I mentioned, is a young up-and-coming rider from Team Nova Nordisk. Jared Dreisner is uh, wearing the colours of Lotto Destiny. Up in the move. And Stoichek makes it, uh, make it set five riders. More land art. Ineos Grenadiers with Egan Bernal in their lineup and close to the head of affairs. Interesting. I wonder what sort of form he's in. He's well wrapped up and netted up after that crash on day one. The Ineos Grenadiers squad doing a lot of the legwork on the front of the peloton in the early stages. And Leah Viviani, very uh, much noticeable at the front, the, their sprinter. Delighted, no doubt, for an opportunity to pay back some of the great efforts that his team will have done in terms of looking after him and giving him a free ride through uh, to the sprints each day. The significant places of worship dotted around the countryside. Gorgeous uh, countryside here in southwestern Hungary. UAE team Emirates squad clearly uh, have ambition in this bike race as well. Uh, could it be for Finn Fisher Black or will it be for Mark Hershey? Both noted climbers, both in good form. Finn Fisher Black, of course, coming off uh, stage win and fourth place overall recently in the Tour of Sicily. And so performed with distinction in the Tour of Romandy. Hershey, so he's had uh, one or two good results of late. Were the conditions changeable during the day? First uh, climb of the day, offering an opportunity. Rodolfo. Nova Nordisk have a bit of some substance here. It's a second successive day of the breakaway. Showing no ill effects. Great uh, recovery, and he's ready to go again. Is the young Italian. Felipe Rodolfo with a very useful haul of five points towards his uh, Mountains jersey ambitions. Just fending off Jared Dreisner's to take the points on offer there. Vantage inside uh, four minutes. Still north of 100 kilometers to go. Once more, Stoichek. Less concerned about that Red Mountains jersey. More, I think, uh, ambition from him for the Green Points jersey. And not too many other riders in there concerned about that. So, uh, Dries Devon doesn't contest quite 
the same vigor and intensity that we've seen from some of the continental teams in the break in the first two days. Just Stojcik will be satisfied with that one as they approach the next climb of the day. And through Page, the first time of asking, and on to the Category 2 assault. There's confirmation of the first climb. The Dolphin drives us into Bond. Climbing out of Page onto the second category climb. Stojcik is a little bit anxious about just how challenging this hill is. Adolfo looks full of fight. Chris Bont on the front of the group. The main peloton still large in number. First climb of the day, not proving terribly challenging. Each in all its glory. 30 years of uh, bike racing in this part of the world. Meanwhile, the counter-attacks coming from the peloton, and there's been plenty of friskiness. A lot of riders and a lot of teams eager to uh, put riders clear and maybe make it up to this group squabbling for the second climb of the day. Once again, it's a wonderful effort and a fine demonstration of uh, ability from Filippo Rodolfo of Team Nova Nordisk. Mind you, this squad, of course, exists to highlight the effects of and the ability the abilities of the athletes who live with diabetes. No such uh, challenges for Sylvain Dillier, but he has got this particular challenge of trying to make his way across to the breakaway group. He's managed to uh, pick up Sebastian Schoenberger, the Austrian for the Human Powered Health Squad. Sylvain Dillier, the uh, Swiss rider. Great classics man, great rider for the uh, for the breakaways as well in the Grand Tours. He's enjoyed success in uh, Giro d'Italia in the past. State success a few years ago. The uh, picture of focus as he tries to close down a, a deficit. Well, it was north of a minute, well north of a minute for quite a while, but the breakaway group put themselves together. Tries to both just drops off the back just momentarily just to finish it off for Dillier. Dillier's not hanging around, actually. Trista Bond's going to have to just be towed back up himself. Dillier is full of fight here, really wants this one. Schoenberger, I think, wasn't making quite the same progress across. And of course, Dillier, former uh, national time trial champion of Switzerland a few years ago, he's had a big old engine. Displayed it to great effect. So that's a seven-rider group clear of the field. Still, Rodolfo to keep the acquisition of mountains points ticking over nicely. But, uh, no contest from Stojcik, who recognizes and understands and accepts that he'll be handing over that red jersey. He has switched his focus to green. Schoenberger, though, just take the points on offer and keep the rotation going. It's Rodolfo, Filippo Rodolfo. A useful batch of five points points gained already on the day. Inside 60 to go. Point Peloton charging along in pursuit of this group as we approach the uh, third and final sprint of the day. And it's a complete haul for the first wild mountain jersey holder, uh, Stojcik, who will be heading into green tomorrow, surely. Oh, with that one, none of the sprinters are going to be involved in the finish, the finale. It's not as we expect. But one or two sprinters involved up front as we see Sam Bennett in the Bora Hansgrove colours. And then on the other side of the punch, uh, Caleb Ewan. An Australian fast man. Both of those riders uh, with top three finishes already in the first two days of sprint action. And both uh, riding in the service of their climbing teammates, the general classification contenders. Stojcik is finding the going a little bit, uh, a little bit challenging. Up onto this second category climb, inside 50 kilometers to go. Emerging through the trees in Page, and the uh, peloton behind has hoovered up Stojcik. Long before they manage 
managed to make their way up to the break. Rodolfo also is absorbed by the main peloton. It's been a great uh, couple of days in the break for the young Italian. He'll have something to celebrate the trip to the podium later on today. Dillier too also finding the going a little bit less than easy. Dillier, after his efforts to get across, it's to bolt that lasts longer in the break. Up over the top of the climb, Schoenberger. And Jared Dreisner is the two strong men, the two strongest climbers. Schoenberger with the Human Powered Health Squad is showing himself to be a very adept, skilled uh, climber indeed. The counter attacking group, Oscar Omni on the front for the DSM squad. And uh, Finn Fisher Black in the white and black colours of the UAE Team Emirates squad. And from Narvaez is the Ecuador rider with uh, Team Ineos Grenadiers. Those riders are absorbing riders from the, uh, from the early break, showing great intent. That's where we're going to be finishing today. The Zuid Page. Nestling in the trees. A very, very steep hill. Right off the town of Page. Plenty of communication between the riders up front. Schoenberger and Dreisner is happy enough with the way things are going. Uh, only Fisher Black and Narvi is not really targeting the mountains. That's the order that they raced across the top of the hill in pursuit of this uh, breakaway group. And the junction about to be made up front. Finn Fisher Black puts in one big final turn. Only it's actually Narvi, as you can see, is the first man to make it up. And uh, Narvi is flying down that descent. Fisher Black uh, had to work a little bit to get uh, on terms. Dillier is along for the ride as best he can, and the main peloton behind, still large in number, and containing some some uh, climbing sprinters, you might say. Sam Bennett on the front of the, the main peloton, towing them along uh, in pursuit of this breakaway group, whose advantage has dwindled. Big turns going on the uh, front of that main peloton, and they close down the, the uh, uh, counter-attacking group, and that was some fine work done. Finn Fisher Black is back in the fold now, back in the UAE Team Emirates lineup. They'll switch their focus to Mark Hershey. Schimberger, though, in the main peloton, having been closed down. This is taking the mountain sports, the penultimate climb of the day. Coming, uh, within 50, barely 14 kilometers of the finish line. Schimberger's hopes, dreams, and aspirations lie no further than that line there. Rodolfo has done enough uh, to take over the lead in the mountains classification, but uh, Schoenberger's at least going to put himself into the points race. Ahead of some great climbing action coming up on the uh, fourth and penultimate stage, and it's De Bond that goes with Schoenberger, erstwhile breakaway companions. A little bit of a ceasefire in the bunch behind, and De Bond just says, you know what, I'll just uh, race clear here and see what opportunities might might await. Jacob Alula also with thoughts of putting a rider up the road. Who stand out uh, general classification contender for the Jacob Alula squad. Trying to play a different card. Peloton's still large in number. I think uh, mindful of that. I mean, it's been a really tough day of racing, but mindful of the fact that there's a uh, super tough GC day again to follow in two days in succession. The riders also thinking about the summit finish here. 2.3 kilometers through to the finish line once we reach that uh, final finishing town of Page. And then there will be something of a disintegration. Peloton not as big as it was when they set out from Kaposhvar at the start of the day. And it's uh, going to be pretty much detonated into smithereens by the time they reach the finish line. And it is said to arrive in ones and twos. Meanwhile, in beautiful colour formation, the Lot of Destiny squad have devoted and uh, Caleb Ewan among their number, close to the head of affairs, just setting a tempo. Interesting ambition once more as well from the Tudor Pro Cycling squad in those black jerseys. The uh, mainly white with black
back sleeves, the UAE team Emirates, surely for Hershey. And the tempo starting to ratchet up. Big names starting to appear. Top 10 on GC, uh, covered by just seconds. Indeed, the first 111 riders in this bike race are covered by just 10 seconds. So, for the day of sprinting, or a couple of days of sprinting action, that's set to change significantly. No breakaway at the moment, no prospect really, as the teams show uh, greater interest in just setting an intense pace that will prevent a breakaway, but more particularly will just ensure that their uh, leading climber will be in prime position starting that climb, because it is a very, very steep climb indeed. And there's plenty of potential for change, and it'll take them a while to get up 2.3 kilometers, it's just how steep a climb it is. Nonetheless, you don't want to have to uh, chase and close down too much of a gap to the, the other rivals. So the ideal scenario is to try and ensure that your climber is in the first uh, five or six riders, at least the first 10 riders at the very least of it making the right turn onto the climb with two and a bit kilometers to go. The climb indeed is also worth talking about. It is the uh, first couple, the first, uh, what, 1,400 meters of it are north of 12%. It's really, really steep indeed. Then it eases out to a manageable, but nonetheless uh, extremely painful. 6%. for a very challenging prospect. Inside 10 kilometers to go. A 180 kilometer stage with more than two and a half thousand meters of climbing. It's been a grippy day for the riders. Thankfully, the weather conditions have improved. That will be a source of great relief to the riders who uh, are at least able to divest themselves of all of that extra rain gear, take off the sleeves and the, uh, the long legs. The chiles. Head out, remove the gloves and give full expression to their talent and ability, and indeed their ambition on that final climb. Inside nine to go, lot of destiny, great show of strength from them. Happy enough to uh, set it up, uh, probably for Sylvain Monique. Sure, what sort of form Eduardo Sepulveda is in? He also could be a prospect. He's a stage race rider for the Modern Destiny squad. Uh, Monique performing well in uh, Giro d'Italia 2022. And confirmation that Schoenberg just popped out of the bunch to take those uh, five points on offer at the final, at uh, the penultimate climb of the day. To Montevink also scoring. Uh, particular interest in the mountains competition and of course there are mountain points on offer at the uh, concluding climb of the day albeit our attention will at that point be totally focused on the battle for stage honors and indeed the overall race leaders jersey that's uh, likely to go with it as i say 111 riders covered by uh, 10 points mostly sprinters and breakaway riders in the top 10 at the moment i think it's clear to say uh, that the winner of the stage today will be the overall race leader. It's the overwhelming likelihood. As, uh, the Modern Destiny squad continue to uh, own the front of the peloton, and the other teams continue to be satisfied with their contribution. the crowd out today as indeed they have been throughout the week here in this 44th edition of the Tour of Hungary, an event which began back in 1925. An on-off situation for many a long year, but it's been run consistently through this decade. It is uh, up in status in world cycling as a result of extra investment. Showcase the beautiful countryside of Hungary in various locations. So to demonstrate what great cycling roads there are. Also serves as an inspiration to a new generation of Hungarian cyclists, some of the two prominent riders in the world tour. It just makes it
Phoenix Leisure Cycling as well. Pretty, uh, pretty appealing looking, doesn't it? Looking leisurely about the progress of these riders across the tarmac. It's north of uh, 50 kilometers an hour here, I would venture to suggest. And the team's starting to crowd around on the outside. A bit uh, more necessity to get into position as the roads become a little bit more technical in nature as we approach the outskirts of Page. The peloton, not too many of those riders will be involved. Just got sight of Ben Hermans, he's been second in this race uh, a couple of years ago. Hermans maybe not on top four because that's not really the place you want to be if you're going for glory today. He's with uh, legs good enough to be there, but uh, I suspect not quite good enough to contest for the win. This form will be managed and honed for other battles, I suspect. Of course, that uh, team also can uh, call on the considerable ability of uh, the likes of Jakob Fusa of the Israel Premier Tech line heading into the final five kilometers of stage three of the Tour of Hungary. the front. Good, uh, good day of racing, I think, for Caleb Ewan. He, he's satisfied to be here, to be able to contribute. So the sprinters, I mean, there's plenty of sprinters out the back here. Uh, at this point, of course, uh, Fabio Jakobsen's long since gone. He's been jettisoned. He was uh, yo-yoing off the back, made his way back in in the early stages after being dropped on the uh, first uh, Category 2 result. But he's been left to his own devices. With thoughts and hopes and dreams of glory on Sunday. Immediate consideration for the Alpes Intercoining squad as they claim control of the uh, of the group heading into the final four kilometres. Built on splits. The right turn will be made with about 2.3 kilometres remaining. So we are well, about a kilometre and a half from that particular point. There's Thibaut Nace down at the back of the main peloton. Good uh, solid block of work done there by the cyclocross specialist who was sixth across the line in the gallop yesterday. Who is uh, second across the line in the sprint on day one. He's at the front of the peloton at the moment. Great effort done by uh, Sam Bennett as he ensures his man. Matteo Fabro is third in the bunch. Which is Curtin, I think, forward, slips back in, but he's right on the tail of Mark Hirschi, nicely and handily placed for the Bora Hanscrow man. It's the Team DSM squad that have their two uh, British climbers in prime position as uh, they put their man into uh, it's uh, for DSM and only, I think, just to try and lead out Max Poole. It's uh, only in that counter-attacking break uh, with Narvez a little while ago, but he's recovered enough to continue to make a contribution. Team DSM with Max Poole also handily placed and on fine form and certainly uh, an emerging talent of some ability. DSM have unearthed a couple of very strong riders from uh, England and Scotland. Carroll also starting to appear. Obviously, the coining. This is the climb before the climb. This will have an effect on the strength of the uh, Any other it is squad one around it. Now it hits the front once more. He's in that break a little while ago, that little softener upper break that uh, was clear of the field but not given enough rope to contest for the victory. He's got Egan Bernal on his wheel. Is Bernal going for it today? Or will it be Tullet just behind? Tullet third in line. Ben Tullet, the young Briton. Only gives a great account of himself. Leon Narvias have recovered from their efforts to lead the peloton down into the right turn that will take them up onto the finishing climb. 
the business end of a tough day of climbing in the Tour of Hungary. And it's TSM that own it. They've stretched that peloton clear, uh, clear and very thin indeed. Only stumps on the pedals. Fabulous response. Narvi is next in line. Then Bernal, then Tullet. And uh, Poole has just picked, picked up on the, on the tail of Egan Bernal. Gun for glory. Max Poole launching onto the tail of uh, Jonathan Narvi is making sure he's in prime position. Ben Tullet next up. Then you've got Mark Hirschi. Uh, Bernal sitting, uh, what, sixth in line at the moment. Looks a bit like Dina, former podium finisher in this event, who's put himself into prime position for the ATT squad. That'll be very impressive and very... Uh, uh, if, if he uh, hangs on for a top ten here, that'll be a decent effort for the, the local man. Teola Cometa don't want to put their uh, rider clear of the field. A surprise attack, but it's not going to be a panic moment for Ben Tullet. Alex Marta. Gutierrez launches into this climb, the steepest and most challenging part of this effort. It's well north of 12% here. And here goes Tullet for glory. Or is it Narvez? No, it's Tullet. Tullet, he fancies this one. Tullet with Hershey responding. And this is a long way to go on this climb. Uh, Max Poole doesn't look as if he's got the uh, the strength to be able to stay with his fellow Britain. As Ben Tullet has Mark Hershey for company, but he's turning himself upside down and inside out. This is a huge investment. Still 1,600 metres to go. Egan Bernal is still there. Just on the uh, tail of Dean, who was second overall in this race back uh, about three or four years ago. Narvaez hasn't given up on this either. He's just in front of Dina. And then you've got uh, Max Poole for DSM. And then up front, you've got Tullet climbing all over that bike like a cheap suit. Here she has been asked a big question here. Tullet wants this one. Two seem to have it between them, but there's a long, long way to go. That's a good response from Max Poole. He's not out of it yet. Neither two is Egan Bernal. Morton Dina as well is just being distanced by the uh, Tour de France and Giro d'Italia champion. Oscar Only is responding. That's very impressive. Only after his efforts in that earlier break. And look at this, it's Mark Hershey as Tullet starts to wilt. Mark Hershey goes. The U18 Emirates rider puts immediate daylight between himself and the Brent News. I think in a world of hurt. His hand cocked from one side to the other. The bike going from one side of the road to the other, and he's almost coming to a standstill. And Tullet is dropping back into the clutches. Max Poole. Hershey though going in only one direction. He goes straight ahead, steals a little hook over his shoulder. And the gradient will shortly start to ease a little. It's been that well over 10% and very, very challenging. It does ease though in the final uh, five, 600 meters. That will be welcome, but he'll continue to pour on the coal as we pass uh, under or beside the kites. That little right turn heading towards the zoo. And Monique has uh, latched on here with Oscar Ongley, and Egan Bernal continue, continues to show signs of improvement after his eighth overall in the uh, Tour of Romandy. After his trials and tribulations on day one when he hit the deck and we wondered whether he'd be able to continue in his bike race, he's still very much a factor. But he's uh, nowhere in sight of Mark Hirschi at the moment. Here she looks around uh, just at the moment when I think he's least likely to see these chasers. Well, the chasers are just in front of this group. This is the third uh, group. And Fablo has, uh, has arrived onto the tail of this group as well. The Bora Hansgrohe rider with Max Only. Uh, Elias Grenadiers with uh, Egan Bernal. And Monique it is that is uh, going to take it up for the 
Not a destiny team. Here she blasts towards the finish line. He's in the finishing barriers at this point. And here she will surely not be caught at this point. He looks in control of his effort. He's a rider who knows about the uh, steep finishes at the end of a long, challenging bike race. He's won flesh alone in the past. And this is a climb, finishing climb, not, uh, not so different in character. A little bit of relief from the gradient. It'll ramp up once more. as we approach those uh, finishing advertising warnings that will tell them the pain is almost at an end. 500 metres to go for the uh, third group. Group one is a solo effort. Back in the boards to bring him on. Stage three to be claimed by Mark Hershey. It's a masterclass in climbing. Demonstrated by the U18 Emirates rider. This is a considerable addition to his Palmares, and with it is going to come the new yellow jersey of the Tour of Hungary. So he's going to run it all the way to the line before he celebrates. It's a clenched fist celebration for Mark Hirsch. He takes stage three, and getting up for a second. He could have had a man a little while ago. Ben Tonnet recovers for a second ahead of uh, Max Poole and the rest across the line. get a sign of the closing moments once more for Mark Hershey as he knows it's done and dusted. He knows he's got his best effort out. He knows he's got the maximum advantage, but that was no easy effort. Tough day of racing for the uh, Swiss rider who takes his first victory of the season. His first ever victory in the Tour of Hungary. Glory for Hershey, he'll be satisfied. And the yellow jersey beckoning onto the shoulders of the 24-year-old Swiss rider. There she got it all out, the man from Bern. Mark, this finish was tailor-made for you. You had successes in these kind of uphill sprints. Uh, tell me about how tough it is. I was super hard, I mean, uh, because we went full gas into it for positioning. And then Ineos started to keep pulling and then uh, Bentulet attacked super early. Uh, I could just follow. And then I know when I over the top, I have to go and I have something left. Also, I think when you go there, it's really hard to react also mentally because everybody was on the limit. And then it's just, yeah, small difference in the might make the difference. And uh, yeah, it was super hard race. What does it mean for you to get the, get your first win this season? A lot. Uh, yeah, first victory is always nice in the season. Uh, I'm just super happy. Yeah, just won a race. It's a super nice feeling. And uh, tomorrow is still hard. Uh, for sure not over and uh, yeah, we will see. Thank you very much, good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Super hard makes super happy for Mark Hirschi. 24-year-old uh, Swiss adds to his Palmares with another significant success this time in the Tour of Hungary with the great and the good coming to congratulate and to welcome him onto the podium for the first time in his event. It will be the last time. We'll have another visit to the podium tomorrow. Timing to come is even more arduous potentially. It's Mark Hershey that uh, wins by eight seconds from Perry Britz, uh, Ben Tonnet, and Max Poole. Monique gets up for a fine fourth place finish ahead of Henri uh, Bernal, Battelati, Forza, Medina, and Fulsang rounding out the top ten. Three Swiss and three Britons in that top ten. It's the top spot. Stage and uh, the overall podium at the moment, at any rate, for Mark Hirschi. And the overall advantage is 10 seconds over Ben Tullett. Max Poole also handily uh, poised ahead of the uh, mountain assault. DSM with two riders in the top four. Oscar Onley nicely placed there as well. Good effort from uh, Egan Bernal. Of uh, Ineos Grenadiers rider in the riders in the top six as well. Dina, reliving old glories for the host nation.
Meanwhile, uh, Matus Stocek, his efforts in the breakaway, netting him the lead of the points classification. Moment. Maximum haul of 15 points means he now has an eight point advantage over the erstwhile leader, Phil Bauhaus. Sprinters abound behind the breakaway man, Stojcik. We need more points, I suspect he's going on the breakaway. And tomorrow then, again the following day. change as well in the climbers classification. Filippo Rodolfo's two days in the breakaway. Letting these little amused looking Italian rider, the 21 year old. Fine effort. Ten points clear now of uh, Sebastian Schoenberger. Tries moves uh, also from today's breakaway. Moving ahead of Matos Stojcek. Battle set to be joined again in the roads of Hungary in the penultimate stage. Best local rider. No surprise who it is. Marcion Dina after his uh, wonderful efforts in his top 10 on the day. Moving up into the top 10 overall, and he is comfortably now the uh, best Hungarian rider. Class of his generation. 122 advantage over Kusto. Well, that's it for the uh, third stage. We're looking forward now to the penultimate stage in the second GC appointment. It's uh, a mouth-watering prospect. Glory for Mark Hershey on stage three. Uh, it's been a uh, great pleasure to bring it to you. We look forward to more great race action on stage four. But for now, from all of us here, it's good.